everyone's 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 how are y'all doing okay so i want to welcome you to arthur's extra sunday i wish i had a speaker for you today but today is going to be a teaching moment a teaching moment yes i want to teach some aspiring authors what they need to know And today's topic is Intellectual Properties, Part 1. I want to talk about the importance of these intellectual properties and what their meanings are and what you need to know when you become an aspiring author. I want to give you some heads up, some nice tips, and keep you in the loop because that's what I do. I'm always here to help. So, welcome to Authors Extra Sunday, and today's topic is Intellectual Properties, Part 1. All right, babies, let's get busy with this lesson, all right? Hello, everybody. Hi, 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 hi. How are y'all doing today? All right. So, my name is Sharice Johnson Moore. How are y'all doing? And I just want to come in and just teach a little bit. Just, just a little teaching. Just a little teaching. And um, just gonna, you know, try to get into a little, little bit today. Um, hi, hello, 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 everyone. Hello on Instagram, hello on YouTube. How are y'all doing? My name is Sharice Johnson Moore, and I want to let y'all know that, ooh, I could do this. I learned some new stuff today, y'all. I had to, to, to move my screens around and not lose the view I have for what I'm about to do. So I can do two things at one time. Ooh, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. As you can see behind me, I have my I have my book. Well, let's see. Let's let's turn this this way. I have my book and my poster. Okay. So we're going to get into this in a minute. But I just wanted to let you know that. The book is on sale, okay, $15. It's, it's entitled Coming to Loving Yourself, and I do have, like, 50 copies here at my house. So if I, you know, need them, I always have them in supply, okay? So if you would like one, please reach out to me, and I will be glad to send you one, okay? So you can leave your name in the comment section, um, your name and your email address, and I will reach out to you, and we'll get together. Okay, so today I want to talk about intellectual properties. Okay, I know somebody might say, well, everybody should know, everybody should know what that is. Okay, some people just don't. Okay, so I don't want to leave anybody out. Okay, as an author, as an author, you have intellectual properties, okay? And your book is considered a intellectual property. Intellectual property is a category of property that includes intangible creations of human intellect, of the mind, of the mind, human intellect. There are many types of intellectual intellectual property, and some countries recognize more than other, and some countries recognize more than others. Okay. The most well-known types are copyrights, patents, trademarks, and trade secrets. Okay. But today I just want to talk about 
copyright. I want to talk about, I want to really get into this uh, thing about copyrights. Okay? I know. Um, okay. So, let's, you know, this is just the first part. I just, you know, I'm, I'm giving it in part. So, it might, you know, this is just the first part of this intellectual property conversation we're going to have. Okay? So, it says... Copyright or copyrights is the exclusive legal right given to an or originator or an assignee to print, publish, perform, film, or record literary, artistic, or musical material and to authorize others to do the same. So, we'll get into this. When you write, when, when you write your book, okay, and you write your book, and you finish writing it, okay, and you've done all the editing and everything, and what, from that first moment that you started typing, you own your work, okay? Now, to really make it really your work, it would be best to send it to the Library of Congress, okay? Library of Copyright Office, Copyright Office of the Government, okay? So, no one will be able to steal your work. Say, okay, I have a poem in my book. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna get to that. I have a poem in my book. If I just wrote that poem, I could copyright. That's just a poem. Right? Hello, how are you doing? Hey, Curtis, how are you doing, baby? Hi, baby, how are you doing today? All right, so say you're an artist, you sing, you sing, and you write, and you write and compose music. Okay? It would be best if you put that music together, put it in format, get it all together, and send it in. I don't care. I, I would say, I'm going to say it like this. I don't care if it's just one beat. One, that one beat in that whole song. That one beat in that whole song, and you wrote that beat, that's yours. You can send that to the copyright office, and it'll be yours. It'll be legally yours. Where no one can, no one can take that right from you. Say somebody steals your or borrows without asking, then you could go into a form of infringement copy. You can go into infringement, or you can, uh, or you can plagiarism, where they stole or borrowed something from you and they did not ask permission. When artists have their music and it's trademarked, it is is copyrighted under the artistic or musical material that's where an artist a, a artist with their music or you wrote lyrics to a song you wrote the lyrics to a, a song you just wrote the lyrics the lyrics for music if you send it into copyright say i wrote I, I, these are my lyrics this is the lyrics to the song all right this is my part my my uh my part of what i play in putting this song together it's yours Okay, so my thing is, whenever you write something, this music, whether it's a film, you might wrote a script, or you um, you wrote a script, or you you, you say you got print design, so you got print design, right? And the print design. You came up with this print design, and you sent that into the copyright office, and you got a, you know, uh, 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 if you made something in your original design, it will be considered a trademark, but we'll get into that another time. That'll be on the next part, okay? Copyright, copyright. Say you got a whole bunch of writing. You got a whole bunch of stuff. You ain't you ain't published it yet, right? And you want to publish, but it would be best if you copyright your work first. 
I tell you why. That keeps people from stealing your stuff. It keeps people from plagiarizing your stuff. It keeps people from um, just walking off and getting the credit for something they didn't do. Okay? And so, okay, when it comes to copyright, okay, what can be copyrighted? Let's get into that. Okay? Literary works, musical works, Dramatic works, pantomimes and choreographic works, pictorial, graphic, and sculpture works, motion pictures, and other audiovisual works, sound recordings, compilations. Those are the things can, that can be copyrighted. Okay? Literary works, musical works, Dramatic works, uh, pantomimes, choreographic works, pictorial, graphic, and sculpture works, motion pictures, and other audiovisual works, sound recordings, and compilations. Say, like me and another person wrote a song, and I wrote the lyrics, and they wrote the music, that's a compilation. Okay, says literary work is a work that explains, describes, or narrates a particular subject, theme, or idea through the use of narrative, descriptive, explanatory text rather than dialogue or dramatic action. Generally, Literary works are intended to be read. They are not intended to be performed before an audience. Okay. Literary works. I have my book, right? I got my book. Okay. If I wanted to go ahead and make that book an audio book, it would be considered sound recording it'll be under the auspice of audio works audio works audio sound i could i could i can go into a studio or you can do it at home whatever way you choose to make your turn your book into an audio book okay my thing is is that I see a lot of people that don't think they could do just a poor man's copy. Poor man's copy of a copyright is when you mail it back to yourself. No, cause, cause yes, that's a poor man's copy. Okay, yeah, you could do that. But my thing is, it's best to have it copyright by the Library of Congress, okay, for the Copyright Office. Okay, it is very important that you do that because you don't want nobody stealing your stuff. That's just like I see a lot of, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into another topic. Uh, I want to talk about trademarks. Okay, well, not, I, I want to get into trademarks. Trademarks are a symbol or word. Hello, how are you doing today? Hi, how are you doing? Hey, hi. Hi, babies. Trademark is a symbol, word, or words legally registered or established by use as representing a company or a product. Okay, so if I wanted to, somebody wanted to trademark their business name. You can trademark that and can't nobody else use that name but you. Words, their words literally legally registered and established by the use as representing a company or product. Okay, so say I wanted to start my own design company, right? Okay, and and I wanted to start my own design <coughs> design company. I would have to trademark my design company in order for no one else to use my trademark. 
to use my name, my name on their pro my say we go with we go with uh, a name like Lena, Lena Designs. Okay, if I want to keep that name to myself, I will turn around and trademark it because that keeps other people from and uh, that keeps other people from using that name and it's legally yours it's legally tied to your company it's legally your brand it's legally your name that keeps other people from stealing your your names for your companies okay trademark is a symbol word or words legally registered or established by use as representing a company or product okay say i wanted to, i had some leaners lean a hand soap okay and I wanted to, I, I want to use the name, but, okay. But, like they say, it's always good to do your research. That's why it's always good to get lawyers, legal representation, to do your work. I mean, by an intellectual, intellectual property lawyer. Okay, intellectual property lawyer. Okay, will be the best person to have for a uh, uh, best person to have for your trademarks, copyrights, patents, trade secrets. Okay, and it's always good. Sometimes you have they just deal with certain lawyers deal with certain things. Some lawyers deal with copyrights. Some lawyers deal with just with patents. Some lawyers just deal with trademarks, and some deal with just trade secrets. Okay, a patent is a government authority or license conferring a right or title for a set period, especially the sole right to exclude others from making or using or selling an invention. Okay, so you you know you got this you got this real good invention. You really want you know you need a patent lawyer, patent and basically a trade and trademark because you want to turn around and have that well you made that invention it's just yours can't nobody steal it it sometimes you know it is good to have these things because people are out here stealing people's stuff all the time i just see i i just saw a young lady i saw a young lady and she makes clothes i've seen this example you know um I seen an example where lady, the young lady made clothes and another company makes clothes that look just like hers, right? I seen this on Instagram, matter of fact. And the other company, she didn't, by her not trademarking her items, her clothes, trademarking her brand, trademarking her name, trademarking her words, her even her her name of her uh, creation, uh, you know, she had to deal with. Now she, you know, she got to deal with that legal stuff because she didn't do her trademark or her patent, or she didn't do her uh, her intellectual properties, okay, as they call it. Okay, so then you got trade secrets. Trade secrets are intellectual property, IP rights intellectual property, IP, rights on confidential information, which may be sold or licensed. Okay. Trade secret are intellectual properties as well. Rights on confidential information, which may be sold or licensed. Okay. Got to get that, you know, got to get that, that got to get that, you know, handled by the copyright office as well. Because you don't want nobody, you want to tell, you know, you got this group of people and you got this idea and you got this thing put together. And then you get a, that's how they, they call it. You, you leak in information, like how another company ends up knowing about what this company, like say cosmetic, right? You got some cosmetics, right? You know, you watch, y'all watch Young and the Restless. I don't know. I ain't watched that in a long time, but I used to watch Young and the Restless. And they always was talking about somebody leaked something to the other company. You got that. I can't. I can't think of the art, the the the, the fictional characters, the the company. Jabot and Newman. 
Jabo and Newman. Remember them? You know, a young and the rest. I don't know if y'all remember that. But they were always talking about somebody was leaking trade secrets or how would this company come out with something? Or you, you, or uh, y'all ever watch a bowling and beautiful? And they would say somebody, well, how did they get these designs before we could get them? How, you know, how did they get these designs before we could even have them made? Okay, somebody had to tell the secret. Okay, somebody had to leak the, you know, got a, got a hole in your time, got a hole in your time, my grandma say. So these things that need to be done, need to be done with a lawyer. Okay, but there are some things that you can do on your own. Okay, like a copyright of your book. If you have... If you have your book cover already made and you've already finished your already finished your um your final draft and everything, you can do that on your own. I know I, I did mine. I did my own. I did my own copyright for my book and my book cover. It was number $35. Okay. $35. You just have to create your account. You have a credit card, you upload everything, your book cover, and you got to give all the credits and things like that, you know. So, you know, you just got to follow the follow the instructions. So my thing is, when you get these, when this is happening, always make sure that you have your stuff prepared. That the government knows that these are the things that I do, and this is what I'm, I'm, I'm this is what's going on, and this is the person that owns this. And um, this is the person that did my art. This is the person that did my book cover. This is the person that uh, might uh, you might have how many people? You might have 20 people write one book. And you know you got to list all them people in that book for to get they so they have copyright. They have intellectual property rights, copyrights. They have a legal representation in this book process. Okay, so you got 20 people. So all them 20 people got to go on that application for your, for your, um, they got to go, um, they have to be included in your copyright. And that will be very much, you know, where everybody can, everybody, you know, everybody splits the fee, of course. So, and the thing is, you can do poems, you can do scripts. You can do, you know, a spoken word. You can you can do everything. You can copyright everything if you take your time and do it. Like this broadcast. This broadcast will be as an audio visual. I could copyright this if I wanted to. Because it's mine. It's mine, and it's something that I'm saying, and it belongs to me. It belongs to Sharice Johnson Moore, LLC, and I could turn around and copyright this if I wanted to. And nobody could use this intellectual property if I, unless they had the permission. Whenever you go into somebody else's book or you go into somebody else's, you, you know, you've been in high school, right? You've been in, y'all been in school, right? And you ever had to do a paper? And you had to have them footnotes. The footnotes is telling you where you got this information from. So basically, what you're saying, okay, well, I use this person. I'm giving them the credit. I'm giving I'm giving them the credit in the footnotes. This is where I got it from. This is what book I got it out of. This is the page I got it off of. This is the author. This is the title of the book. You know, it's it's just like footnote, okay? Footnotes. Um and whenever you want to use someone else's book in teaching a class or or you want to um you want to you know maybe use a use something of theirs that you're you're teaching somebody it will be who you to ask them write them and ask them can i use your this part of this book out you know this part out of your book uh, for the teacher class or, uh, you know, because it's just, it's just out of respect. It's out of respect. You know, when you use other people, other people's belongings is, is my grandma say, 
you all up in other people's Kool-Aid and don't know what the flavor is, okay? But you have to keep, you have to keep it respectful when it comes to using other people's material, whether it be audio, visual, uh, whatever. You know, that's that's why the movies have these copyrights on them. Okay, you know, like you, you know, it, it's you never see them. That's why they always talk about piracy when it comes to a movie. You can't use any parts of this movie without asking the studio who has copyrights to a movie. You can't use this, you know, unless you ask permission. Okay, um, that's why they say it's piracy. You know, like your bootleg movies, you know, bootleg movies is a form of piracy and it leaves out a lot of money for these uh for the companies that that do the movies it leaves out a lot of income a residual income for those that uh put all the hard work in basically you stealing somebody's work so you know that's why they they always you know find find people or they or you get jail time or something like that and you know depends on you know it depends on what the law is which I do not know so I'm not going to I'm not even going to get in that but yes you can get a fine and you can go to jail behind stealing other people's belongings okay that's just like if somebody broke in my house and they come in and steal they stole something from my house or so they got to pay for it okay so. I just wanted to get into this first part of what intellectual properties was about. Okay. So let's review and then we'll meet up next week for another conversation on Office Extra Sunday about another part of intellectual properties. Okay. So we got we got the four type, we got the, the well most well-known types is copyrights, patents, trademarks, and trade secrets. Okay. And then you got copyright is an exclusive legal right given to an originator or an assignee to print, to publish, perform, film, record literary, artistic or musical material, and to authorize others to do the same. Okay. Then we go into we go into patents. Okay. Patents is a government authority or license conferring a right or title for a period, especially the sole right to exclude others from making, using, selling an invention. Trademark. Okay, trademark is a symbol. So you made up, you know, made up this symbol, you know, like AKAs, that's trademark. You got a Alpha Omega Sci Fi, that's trademark. Okay. Um, even the even the name Alpha Phi Alpha 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 Kappa Alpha is a trademark. Okay. Um okay, and the thing is, is that um you got Trade secrets, okay? Trade secrets is our intellectual properties, IP, our intellectual property rights or confidential information which may be sold or licensed, okay? So we're going to go into what can be copyrighted, literary works, musical works, dramatic works, pantomimes, and choreographic works, pictorial Graphic and sculpture works, motion pictures and other audiovisual works, sound recordings, compilations. Okay, and it says a literary work is a work that explains, describes, or narrates a particular subject, theme, or idea through the use of narrative, descriptive, or explan explore explanatory. Oh, explanatory <laughs> text rather than dialogue or dramatic action. Generally, literary works are intended to be read. They are not intended to be performed before an audience. Okay, so I wanted to give you that information today. And 
I thank everyone for coming in to Authors Extra Sunday. I want to also put this out there. This is the last broadcast for this season. Okay, this is the last broadcast for this season. Um, this this broadcast, uh, this this uh, this show will not air again until September. Okay, now I'm calling all my authors. If you're paying attention, authors, if you are author and you would like to be on my Authors Extra Sunday to talk about your book or talk about what you got coming out next, or if you already have, if you are an already experienced author and you would like to come up and talk about your new book, or we have brand new authors, please get in contact with me. Through my email, S N J M O O R E at seven one, I mean, S N J M O O R E seven one at outlook.com. Okay, so sorry, I get that confused. Okay, it's S N J M O O R E seven one at outlook.com. Or you can reach out to me, my DMs for um, Twitter, Instagram. Facebook, um, and let's let's get you on the show. Let's get you on on Authors Extra Sunday so people can know about what you're doing and what you're writing and what you're, what you're exploring, you know. And I love y'all, and I thank you so much for joining me today on Authors Extra Sunday. All right? I will see y'all in September, okay, babies? I love y'all very much. Okay, and if you missed this show, the live live, if you have missed the live version of this, this will be on. This will be on my anchor.com, anchor.com, anchor FM. Okay, anchor on my podcast. Okay, my podcast also runs on Spotify, iTunes, Apple, Google, Outcast. Pocket Cast uh, and Verbal, okay? And I have so many other things that's going on. So I want y'all to have a blessed day and thank you for coming in for After Sex or Sunday. Bye, babies. Love you. See y'all in September. Bye, babies. that you are taking this all in. Today's topic is intellectual properties. And I just want to help those that are thinking about writing a book, have a concept about a book, or really need to have this information before you proceed to the point where you're about to publish. You're about to click that button and say, oh, I'm about to publish this on Amazon. Oh, my God. So, I know it's all exciting. It's good information. And I like, like, I like, I really like giving information to people. I really like sharing. And I want you to know these things. Because when I became an author, I decided to become an author. These are some of the things I had to learn along the way. Okay, so I want to give you a heads up, give you a heads up, wanted to give you a heads up about some things that you really need to know. And I truly enjoyed today's episode. So catch me next week for part two of Intellectual Properties. Okay, and I want to say to everyone, I thank you for listening. I thank you for sending your messages. I thank you for uh, participating in the live views that I do. And I wanted to put this out there for all authors. 
If you would like to be on Arthur's Excerpt Sunday, please leave a message in the message board. Or you can contact me through my email address, which is in the text for the information of this podcast episode. I thank everyone for participating, for coming in, sharing their thoughts and their comments. And I want to motivate you to become the best author you can be. All right, babies. So I will catch you next time on Authors Extra Sunday. All right. I love y'all and I want you to have a blessed day. And all information is very important in your journey to authorship. All right, babies. I'll talk to y'all later. Love you. Bye-bye.